that, that actually confused me the first time I heard it too. Um, <laughs> so I, um, I'm here to talk to you about a concept that's probably very simple that I feel I have complicated or maybe Jack did. I'm not sure yet. Um, but as people, we sort of face challenges of standing out and being different. We all want to make a really good impression, or maybe there's a skill that we have that um, we have a lot of competition and we want to be better or different. Um, maybe we want to kind of be awesome and, and make that kind of bold impression on somebody that we like. Um, they're all things that I've faced, I'm sure all, all of you have as well. Um, so I'd like to talk to you guys about an alter ego and the power of how an alter ego can create alter opportunities, alter potential, and a whole bunch of other really cool things that you might find outside of yourself. So meet Jack Reynolds. Um, right, there he is. Jack is my alter ego. He's sort of my vehicle that takes me out, does bold, funny, interesting, smart things, things that I might not think of on my own. And I really, really appreciate him for it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why that is. But first, I beg the question, like, why are we so crazy? For thousands of years, we've been creating things like alter egos. There's already so many people, and we're all so unique. But now there's alter egos. Um, well, I think that's because we live under something I like to call the awful rules of engagement. Um, sort of a thing that I've coined um, from being limited, I feel, in life. And I want to give a couple of examples of that. I've been to middle school. I don't know about you. Um, and I had a teacher that one time said, we're going to do this exercise called find out what you want to be when you grow up. And I was like, I don't even know where I'm going to pee in like five minutes. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, sure, let's do this thing. So we got this brochure my teacher put on, on the table. And, um, it was full of industries and job titles and descriptions and sort of things like that. Um, I wanted to be a graphics designer, so flipped over to that page, turned there, there was graphic designer, annual salary, $32,000. And I was like, wow, that's really awesome. I think that's cool. Um, that's so much money. You know, I, I'm going to be set for life. And uh, <laughs> you know, as a middle school, so you could believe anything, right? That's very, that's very limiting. Um, I recently saw one of the most amazing uh, TED Talks by a guy named Sir Ken Robinson. And the subject of his talk is how we're being educated out of our creativity. And when I saw it, I completely agreed. But I also thought, based on this and other things, that we're not only being educated out of our creativity, but also being educated into limitation. And that's, that sucks, I think. It's really frustrating to think about. Um, a couple of examples of this are, um, what about this idea of security? Um, you know, go to school, get a, get a degree. It's going to be very secure to get this job. It'll be great. And I, I beg the question if that exists these days. Um, like, what if you died before you got to work on something that you were excited about? To me, that's terrifying. Um, we hear a lot of phrases these days by media and startups and cool tech stuff. But it goes coupon, groupon, discount, limit, narrow. And I feel like. We sort of adopt this mentality over time, and we don't really realize it. And that's also very frustrating. Um, I, I think that I challenge the world to indulge more often. This is something I was very excited about. Um, when I was 16 or 17, I had this Honda Accord, busted hubcaps, dent in the door. The stereo was completely missing. I didn't realize that I needed to replace the fuse. And it smelled like this smoke. I don't know. Um, anyway. I really wanted a BMW. I really wanted it. And I talked to my parents. I was like, I think I want to buy this car. I'm really excited about it. And uh, I was strongly advised not to. You know, it's very expensive. You know, it's, you know, it's very foreign. Just get a regular car. Maintenance is going to be three times more. You know, let's, you know, let's not do this. And I was kind of disappointed, a little sad. Maybe you guys have had a similar experience. And Jack walked out of me and was like, no, nah, dude. We're getting this thing. <laughs> so he writes an email to the owner of the car and is like, oh, yeah, we're going to buy it. You know, let's uh, set up a time. And there I was left to explain to my dad, like, we're going to buy this car. <laughs> um, so this is me indulging, driving it across a river. Uh, I did that one time, I guess. Um, on the other hand, 
we're sort of taught about this idea of limitless potential as humans. We can do anything, and we hear about it all the time. It's in advertising, it's in commercials and websites, like live an awesome lifestyle, buy this huge house, do this really awesome thing, be super cool, but like on a $32,000 graphic designer budget that I'm still stuck to, I, I don't really know how that's possible. And that's frustrating, and it kind of creates this situation where we're sort of in the middle between a rock and a hard place, and we become you know, discouraged. Um, I think we become kind of stagnant and kind of dry. And to me, that's very unreasonable. And I recently saw another talk, I'm a huge fan of these people, um, Eddie Huang um, talks about being unreasonable. I'm also about a healthy disrespect, right? Life is a pool inhabited by sensitive, small-minded, boring people like this woman on this floating yoga mat. <laughs> All right? She makes, this woman makes no sense. She wants to float on this yoga mat as close to the water as possible, read her book, check her cell phone, and not get wet. It's un she's totally unreasonable. So. I was in the Hamptons, I saw this woman, I told my boy, I said, you want that technology shit, get your iPhone ready, I'm going to cannon hold. <laughs> so, so he, he does, and uh, so that's a really great representation of this sort of being really close to living, but being comfortable and not really trying stuff. It's a, it's a good metaphor, but, but what I like to think about is that Eddie, I challenge that he was actually Eddie at that moment. I think. It's not every day that Eddie walks past his swimming pool and sees people floating. He's like, I'm going to cannonball all the time. I don't think that's true. What I think is that in an instant, he got an idea, like everyone does. I think they do. And it's fascinating. And I think he can see sort of the outcome of this from start to finish. Maybe he'll shake her up. But I think he's shaking himself up. And he's doing something that, at its very least, created incredible content for his talk. It was a great talk at Big Omaha. So good for him. Um, as a disclaimer, this can get you in trouble, so don't do it all the time. Don't cannonball everyone you see or you know, spray them with the garden hose or whatever it is that you do. Um, but think about it. It was that moment that created something really interesting and provided really good content for his talk. And that made me think. So what would Jack do? So <laughs> um, I've had some experiences with Jack. We run into each other from time to time. Um, so on the subject of, of dating, I, I would say there's 10 reasons why she's not into me, Eight, maybe 12. But Jack would say, I'm going to get her no matter what. On the subject of money, I would be hesitant. I would say, oh, it's kind of expensive. I don't know if I could afford that. Jack would say, I'm going to find out how to get that no matter what it takes. Maybe it doesn't even take money. Maybe I just need to think a little bit. How can I get that? On the subject of public speaking, I'm like, I just definitely can't be that guy that drops the first F-bomb. But Jack Reynolds would say, fuck that. There's going to be tons of stress relief across the audience when that happens. <laughs> so, when you, so when you get your sort of brain baby, maybe you should act on it is my, uh, is my challenge to you. Get your unusual moment on. I have, I have actually one right now. I just kind of like, I hope he doesn't mind that I'm actually going to drink out of this glass that he was just drinking out of. I'm very, very thirsty. So... Um, I want to talk about a process that I kind of came across to get this unusual moment on. I was with a friend at a restaurant. I've been to many restaurants. Um, <laughs> and I've had many conversations. But this one I remembered. It was very important. Um, I was talking to this girl about a company that she was interested in starting and has been working on, but kind of encountered some roadblocks and was having a hard time. And I was like, come on, you can do this thing. It was very easy for me to say, I swear. So you can do this, you know, you got it. And she was, you know, hesitated, you know, she was like, but what about this and what about that? I was like, what about it? So I said, like, let's try this exercise. What I want you to do, I want you to come here with me for a second. We're at this restaurant. There's tons of people around, but we're having a conversation. We're in our own little world here, so we're going to separate ourselves. Here, you can say anything that you want. You can say, I'm going to start that company. You can talk about what it's going to be. You could say, I'm going to get that job. Whatever, whatever the case may be, you got this. I said, gain control. You have arms. You can move them. You have a mouth you can talk with. You have hair you can put your fingers through, but actually think about it. And then implement your alter ego. Do something that you wouldn't normally do. Do something very, very different. And sort of the, she, we thought about this, and we talked about this, and I challenged her. And it sort of built up the conversation. We got in this heated debate again. I was like, I'm like, come on, you got this. You're going to start this company. 
she was like, well, I'm worried about it. I'm thinking maybe I can't do this or maybe there's not enough time or something like that. Or you know, what if it's not the right thing to do? And I was like, come on, you, know, you, you can do this. It's actually going to be harder for you to pick up that water glass and throw it on the floor <laughs> than it is going to be to start that company. And so she did something different. And that's the most important thing there. And I challenge everyone to do something different. So jack up your life, please. <laughs> Whatever it is you need to do, I, I've come up with some ideas. Maybe get in your car from the left side. Maybe stand in the bathroom mirror, brush your teeth, and hold your hand above your head. Maybe you should um, email that CEO, and you've probably heard it for let me take you out to lunch and maybe get that job. But maybe make him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, maybe do something really out of the box. <laughs> and also, jack up your friends, because getting people to do this with you is the most important thing. So if you take anything away from this, what I want you to do is think of one tiny little thing or maybe one big thing that you can do very differently. And I want you to promise someone in this room next to you or whatever to do something different and be awesome. Thanks. <laughs>